A mysterious girl impregnates men who fail to use protection. A charming thief is dragged inside a hanging cabinet by a tentacle-like monster. This man makes the fateful decision to dispose of his paralyzed wife, but soon he regrets it bitterly. All of these are the stories narrated by a creepy undertaker around which develops an equally interesting storyline based on the movie titled The Mortuary Collection. A newspaper boy rides the bicycle through a peculiar island town known as Raven's End. As he completes his route, he notices scattered newspapers near a house that nobody seems to pick up. Driven by curiosity, the boy decides to peek into the mail slot of the house. While taking a picture with his camera, he suddenly encounters the intense gaze of an old man. Staggering backwards to retrieve the stuck camera strap, the boy accidentally encounters Montgomery Dark, a creepy undertaker from the town. The sight of the elder terrifies the kid, and he runs away in horror, leaving his camera behind. The old man resembling a walking corpse, gives him a long chilling look. Some time later, Montgomery delivers a eulogy at a child's funeral, evoking strong emotions among the attendees. After the service he notices a young woman about to open the boy's casket. Instantly he stops her, asking her not to disturb the deceased. The woman introduces herself as Sam and expresses her desire to work at the funeral home. Her attention is drawn to the undertaker's vast collection of books, sparking her curiosity about their contents. Montgomery reveals that he authored all of these books, which contain stories from his deceased clients. Sam gets intrigued and asks the man to share some of the scariest stories. Montgomery recounts a story set in the 1950s, focusing on a woman named Emma. Emma is a thief who steals wallets and valuable items at upscale parties. One day, she goes to the bathroom to clean out the wallets she stole. After stashing all the valuables in her bra she is going to leave the party. But suddenly, she hears a mysterious knocking sound coming from a hanging cabinet. Unable to resist her curiosity, Emma opens the locker with a nail file, accidentally cutting her finger in the process. As she tends to her wound, the cabinet unexpectedly shuts from inside. When Emma opens it again, she is horrified to discover a tentacle-like monster inside. She closes the closet door but the persistent monster continues its attempts to break free. Desperate for help, Emma calls out but her please go unheard. Eventually the monster seemingly calms down, giving Emma the courage to cautiously leave the room. Once the stolen watch falls to the floor, the closet rapidly opens. The monster seizes Emma, dragging her inside by cracking her back. However, Sam is not really impressed by the story. She says it's not bad but somewhat predictable. Montgomery in turn, hands her a document to sign as part of her job application, assuring her that he has many more creepy stories to tell. With that Sam is officially hired, and Montgomery takes her on a tour. In the room with the boy's casket Sam inquires about him, but Montgomery says that the story would be too shocking for her psyche. Undeterred, Sam requests another story, prompting the undertaker to begin a new tale. The following incident took place at a university during the 1960s. The main hero is a guy named Jake. He delivers a speech to the freshman girls advocating for the expansion of women's rights. He expresses that the girls should be free to sleep with whomever they choose, emphasizing the importance of using protection. Jake distributes rubbers to the girls and invites them to an evening party. Jake notices a beautiful girl named Sandra. Sandra spots that Jake doesn't look like a freshman since she hasn't seen him around before. Jake admits that he's here only to meet new girls and have fun. To his surprise, Sandra shares the same intentions. It's just what he is looking for, so the guy invites her to his party. On the way to class Sandra passes by a booth with pictures of missing guys. At the party Jake spots Sandra and immediately invites her to his room. Before getting into it, Sandra insists Jake use protection. The guy is not enthusiastic about the idea, although he reluctantly agrees. During their encounter, Jake discreetly removes the rubber without Sandra's knowledge, sinking into the senses. It was a really wild night, and the next morning Jake wakes up to find that Sandra had already left. She left her phone number written on the mirror, but Jake is not interested in further relations, so he simply wipes away her message. Jake starts feeling unwell, it seems like something is stirring in the stomach. Vomiting only worsens his condition. His friend arrives and notices a rash all over Jake's body, suggesting he should see a doctor. At the clinic the doctor examines Jake and detects something very strange. While he steps out of the room, Jake reads the diagnosis and with horror discovers that he is pregnant. After returning home, Jake takes contraceptives in the hope that they will help. However, his body rejects them. As his belly starts to swell, Jake panics and decides to contact Sandra. He makes numerous calls in an attempt to retrieve her number. Finally, he reaches out to her and arranges a meeting at her house. In pain, Jake heads to meet Sandra when suddenly his friends intervene. As members of the student fraternity, they intend to celebrate his 67th school encounter. The number 67 holds significance for the fraternity, and his friends fail to notice his condition. However, the celebratory ceremony abruptly ends when Jake's water breaks, showering his fraternity brothers with a strange liquid. He runs away, leaving them in shock. Jake arrives at Sandra's house. Her father finds Jake with his swollen belly but he doesn't appear very surprised. Sandra's mother immediately calls her daughter and begins preparing Jake for the impending birth. 
Jake accuses Sandra of causing all this, but she points out that none of it would have happened if he had used protection. Jake is horrified when Sandra's mother mentions that the baby will exit the same way it entered his body. He lets out a scream of excruciating pain as his belly bursts. Sandra's mother swiftly takes the newborn to the children's room, where many other babies sleep in their cots. She tries to leave the room quietly but accidentally steps on a toy, causing a sudden noise that awakens the babies, who now clearly don't resemble humans. This story deeply impresses Sam. Montgomery leads her to the embalming room, where Sam finds the body of the woman. Sam is surprised to see that the body appears unharmed, so she struggles to understand the cause of her death. Montgomery narrates the tale of this woman named Carol. Carol's wedding ceremony takes place, and a man named Wendell places a ring on her finger. As Wendell recites the vows, the church darkens, and Carol begins to struggle with heavy breathing. Suddenly Wendell wakes up from a nightmare, only to hear Carol coughing in another room. He rushes to her side, feeling helpless as he watches her motionless body. Wendell prepares meals for Carol, who remains completely immobile and is even unable to eat on her own. Several days later, a doctor visits their house to examine Carol. Wendell, burdened by financial struggles, becomes even more upset after the doctor's words. The latter tells him that his wife may live for about another year. Wendell admits that the situation is bad, he won't be able to afford her treatment. In response, the doctor gives Wendell pain medication for Carol. The doctor subtly hints that an overdose could lead to her death without leaving any traces in her body. In the evening Wendell arranges a dinner for himself and Carol. He looks at his wife as if waiting for any sign that she remains sound of mind. But Carol doesn't give any signs of hope. Wendell covertly slips pills into Carol's food as he feeds her. Suddenly she grasps his arm, revealing that she's still conscious. Wendell tries to induce vomiting to make her spit out the pills, when Carol's head falls onto the table. As he lifts her head, he is horrified to discover a sharp statue stabbed into Carol. Wendell desperately calls the doctor, seeking his assistance. But the doctor callously advises him to dispose of Carol's body in the ocean. Wendell attempts to fit her into a box but finds it difficult. As he decides to the body, she unexpectedly grabs his hands and screams. Seconds later she dies, allowing Wendell to proceed with dis the body and placing Carol's remains in the box. After the work is done, Wendell puts the box in the elevator, hoping to get rid of Carol's body. The elevator starts moving, but before reaching the first floor it suddenly stops. After several attempts Wendell manages to pry open the doors. At this moment his neighbor appears and offers to help. Mrs. Avery suggests calling the police. Wendell shouts to stop her, but the woman doesn't listen, heading home to make the call. Wendell spots blood seeping from the box. He attempts to escape through the elevator hatch but fails to do it. Frustrated, he takes off his wedding ring when the latches on the box suddenly open. Wendell wants to open it, but the elevator unexpectedly starts moving down. Even after reaching the first floor, it continues its descent. As Wendell looks through a side window, he can see himself and Carol living happily together. Suddenly, Carol's horrifying body emerges from the box. The undead creature places the wedding ring back on Wendell's finger and kisses him. After some time, when the police finally open the elevator door, they find Wendell inside. He is alive but has completely lost his mind. He repeatedly recites his wedding vows while clutching the wedding photo album. According to Montgomery's words, after that incident Wendell has been confined to the asylum. The story is good, but in Sam's mind, it sounds a bit predictable. Montgomery agrees, stating that every man's sin must be met with punishment. The Undertaker continues the tour and guides Sam to the second basement. Low temperatures reign here, which allows for keeping the bodies cold. Montgomery leads the woman to the crematorium, where he prepares for the cremation of the deceased boy. At the last moment Sam intervenes, stopping Montgomery. She confesses that she actually came to his house not for work but to see the boy. She blames herself for his death and pleads with the man to allow her to look at him one last time. Montgomery eventually agrees to her request, and soon Sam begins to tell the Undertaker the story of the boy's passing. They dive into the events of the boy's last day. His name is Logan, and Sam is his nanny. The boy is already asleep while the young woman is waiting for his parents to arrive. In the kitchen Sam discovers a message on the answering machine from them. Surprisingly, but Logan's father is revealed to be Dr. Kubler, the same doctor who provided pain pills to Wendell's wife in the previous story. Logan's parents inform Sam that they will return home later and instruct her to ensure that their son is asleep. Of course, Logan is watching his childhood dreams, so Sam begins preparing her dinner. A news report warns of a riot at the city asylum, cautioning residents to lock their doors due to potential escapees. Upon returning home, Sam discovers a wounded man in the living room. She quietly goes to the kitchen to retrieve a weapon. Once she took a knife, Sam comes face to face with the unknown. He acts strangely but poses no immediate threat, leading Sam to assist him. While the young woman tends to his wounds, another message from Logan's mother plays on the machine. She's urging Sam to secure the house due to an escaped lunatic victimizing children. Upon hearing the message, the man's face actually changed. He's looking strangely at Logan's toys, and Sam realizes that he is that lunatic. She reacts swiftly, forcing his hand into a meat grinder. Sam fights Logan with all of her might, trying to defeat him and protect the kid. The man overpowers her, tossing her aside. After inflicting her several blows, he goes to search for the boy. 
Shortly after, Logan's parents arrive but find themselves unable to enter the house. At that moment the psycho attempts to strangle Sam. She manages to fight back and throw him down the stairs. He survives after falling, and Sam strikes him with a TV set, smashing his head. Upon entering the house Logan's parents find the murdered man. He was their son's babysitter. They learn from the news that the escaped lunatic is a woman named Charlotte. They try to locate Logan, and to their horror they discover the charred remains of their son in the furnace. Montgomery realizes that Sam and Charlotte are the same person. Bewildered, he inquires why she came here. In response, the woman takes the knife out and extracts Logan's teeth, explaining that it's required for her collection. A few seconds later Charlotte stabs the undertaker to keep her secret hidden. But the result is unexpected. It seems Montgomery is not going to die. He's laughing, embalming fluids oozing from his wound. The man says there is a thing she didn't count on. Frightened Charlotte tries to escape. She reaches the exit, opens the door only to find herself drawn back inside. This happens every time she goes out. Montgomery appears behind Charlotte and advises her to stop. The woman doesn't listen to him and rushes away. In the next room she discovers a huge collection of books on the shelves. Soon the undertaker appears and shares his own story. In the past he did similar things as Charlotte does. He committed misdeeds thinking he would be untouched by the consequences. Just until he met this place. By using his cane, the undertaker forces several books to tumble from the shelves. Montgomery reveals that these books contain the stories of the kids Charlotte has burned. The books open on their own, releasing the spirits of the murdered children. Montgomery congratulates the woman on the new stage of her existence, and the undead child attacks Charlotte. They bite her, causing to drop a tooth collection. The other undead join in the attack, forcing Charlotte to fall in a desperate attempt to defend herself. One of the children retrieves a tooth from the floor and puts it in his own jaw. Montgomery is truly glad to have found a replacement. All done up, he steps out onto the street, finally feeling the warmth of the sun on his skin. Yet, he barely makes a few steps when his body disintegrates into dust in an instant. At that very second Charlotte awakens within the building. She looks in the mirror only to be horrified by her disfigured face. The help wanted sign at the house entrance falls to the ground. The mysterious house has already found its custodian. Charlotte has assumed the role of the city's new undertaker. The recapper thanks you for watching. Please share your opinions in the comments and let me know if you want more mystical stories like this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and see you in next video.